take a look at this interesting reaction. It's actually two steps used in sequence to add water to an alkene. It's reduce-selective, as you can see, and follows Markovnikov's rule, which tells us that the hydrogen will add to the carbon that has more hydrogens. In this case, right-hand alkene carbon, which has two hydrogens. This electrophilic addition to an alkene depends on mercuric acetate acting as an electrophile. So let's take a quick look at that reagent. Mercuric acetate is often written like this. OAC stands for acetate. But it looks like this when we write out all the atoms. These are both acetate groups, OAC, and they're leaving groups. This oxygen-mercury bond is easily broken. An acetate leaves with a pair of electrons to put a positive charge on mercury. That makes the mercury an electrophile. It needs a pair of electrons. Now I've drawn the alkene I showed you earlier on its side so we can better see the top and the bottom of the pi bond. In the first step of this reaction, mercuric acetate adds as an electrophile. The pi electrons react with the mercury to form something that looks very much like the bromonium ion we saw earlier. The mercury is associated with both carbon atoms that used to be part of the alkene carbon-carbon double bond. In the second step, this intermediate ion adds a nucleophile, which must come from the back side because the mercury is on the other side. It's simply a steric factor. Mercury is blocking approach from one side, so the nucleophile adds from the bottom. This bond breaks, and the positive charge on mercury is satisfied. Notice that we're using a neutral nucleophile, so once it's added to the carbon, that oxygen has a positive charge. It still needs to lose a proton. But before we go on with the mechanism, let's look at the explanation for the regioselectivity, why water adds to the more highly substituted carbon leaving mercury attached to the carbon that has the greater number of hydrogens. In the transition state leading to the addition of water, the carbon atom develops considerable positive charge. We know that alkyl groups stabilize positive charge. So here's an isopropyl group, and this is like a secondary carbocation. So the alkyl group makes this more stable, which brings me to comparison with the other possibility. If water were to add to this carbon, this right-hand carbon would have a partial positive charge, with two hydrogens attached rather than an alkyl group, so it would be less stable. This is like having a primary carbocation. So this transition state is less stable than this one. The activation energy barrier to making the product that would go through this transition state is greater. The reaction is slower. This leads to the regioselectivity that we observe where the water adds to the more substituted carbon. Returning now to the reaction mechanism, loss of a proton forms an intermediate the electrons on an oxygen from water remove this proton. We have a stable neutral intermediate. Not the final product because we have a carbon-mercury bond that's easily broken by treating with a reducing agent, sodium borohydride. Without getting into the mechanism of this reduction, let me just say that borohydride has four hydrogens attached to the boron, and one of those hydrogen replaces the mercury. The CH2 that we started with becomes a methyl group and the other alkene carbon has a hydroxyl group attached. Now I've drawn one enantiomer. In fact, the mechanism I've written here forms only one enantiomer, but we're starting with an optically inactive reactant, so we need to have an optically inactive set of products. We make both enantiomers. Take a look. The electrons in the pi bond can react from the lower side to form a bond with the mercury, or it can react with the upper side to form a bond with mercury. This is what leads to the formation of two enantiomers. In the second step of this reaction, water adds from the back side, either from above, with the intermediate on the left, or from below, with the intermediate on the right. In either case, it's region selective, and the subsequent steps that lead to product form enantiomers. The one I've shown on the left leads to the R enantiomer. The one I've shown on the right leads to the S enantiomer because it's equally likely that the mercury will react from above or from below, we make equal amounts of these two enantiomers, a racemic mixture. So hydration of an alkene using the mercuric acetate route, mercuration followed by demercuration, is regioselective. But when a stereogenic center is formed, a racemic mixture results. Okay, we understand this reaction. But perhaps you're wondering, why would we do this reaction when we could simply add water to an alkene by using sulfuric acid and water? Well, good question. 
take a look. It's true that this seems to accomplish the same thing that acid catalyzed hydration does. 1 2 addition to an alkene. The hydroxyl ends up on the secondary carbon. But notice what I said there. The hydroxyl ends up on the secondary carbon. Take a look what really happens when we do acid catalyzed hydration of this alkene. We form a tertiary alcohol, not a secondary alcohol. We don't observe 1 2 addition. It's evident that a rearrangement has happened during the reaction process. This is easily explained by thinking about the reaction mechanism. In acid catalyzed hydration, the first step is addition of a proton to the alkene. This makes a carbocation. In the secondary carbocation at the bottom, I show that proton that's added in tan. I have a blue highlighted hydrogen on the other side because now a rearrangement can happen. When this hydrogen migrates with a pair of electrons, something we call a hydride migration, we transform a secondary carbocation into a tertiary carbocation. The tertiary carbocation is more stable, so the rearrangement happens before water can add to the carbocation. After rearrangement, the water adds as a nucleophile to the carbocation, and following proton loss, we see the alcohol is added to the tertiary carbon. This tertiary alcohol will be the major product. Depending on the conditions, it might be the only product. So you can see that during a synthesis, when we want to add water to an alkene and avoid a rearrangement, it's better to use the oxymercuration-demercuration two-step approach. 